Our didactic presenter is coming all the way from Eastern Province, Dr. Mando Piri. I welcome once again, Dr. Mando Piri. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so he's a, a co lead mentor for Eastern Province. Uh, we will have our presenter for our echo case uh, today coming from uh, Kawe Women and Newborn Hospital, Mr. Brian uh, Tsipatela. Um, we have a panel of experts coming from MOA, CDC, UTH Hub, um, CIDES, and our, we've got our provincial coordinators coming from Lusaka and also Western Province, uh, Dr. Victoria Manzi and Dr. Chipasha Mungwe. So apart from Dr. Manzi, do we have any of our, um, of our um, experts on the call? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is Meg Ito from CDC. I'm Gloria Muntali from Minstrel. Hi, Dr. Meg. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. We have enough uh, of our uh, presentation, but just a bit. So if you're not present, you need to contribute something or you have a question, box. And I encourage everyone to uh, please participate uh, um, in, the poll, in the poll questions and also ensure that you, uh, re you fill in the registration form uh, by following the link that will be provided in the chat box. With that being said, I will hand over to Dr. Mando Piri to take us through the uh, deductive session. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much, Dr. Chela. Uh, so just uh, to confirm if you are able to see my, my, my slides. Yes, we are able to see the slides. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I hope my voice is clear enough also. Dr. Shiloh, if you can confirm. Yes, you're loud and okay. clear. Okay, so thank you very much. So my name is uh, Amando Piri, has already highlighted. I'm coming from Eastern Province. And there I coordinate uh, pediatric and adolescent um, uh, health services. Uh, I don't have any disclosures that I, I need to, uh, to confer to the team, and I will begin. Yeah, so we'll begin, our, our topic today is uh, pediatric retention. Uh, so I won't look at so much about the adolescents, but we'll look at the pediatric retention. And um, so by definition, uh, pediatric reten retention is basically um, retaining someone in, in care, uh, usually recipients of care, uh, are monitored in this way by various um, uh, organizations. But under the HIV program, we, we monitor the, uh, them either on a monthly, uh, quarterly, um, monthly or quarterly basis, but usually it's very uh, good to monitor it over um, about 12 months uh, period. So we'll look at uh, a few definitions um, so that no one is lost in the, in the, in the talk or in the conversation. So a client that is deemed to be late, this is a client that was scheduled for an appointment and um, has not uh, come for that particular appointment. And this is what is being talked about here. There's also a, a definition which is called interruption in treatment or loss to follow up. So these are clients that have um, passed um, mostly 28 days from their last uh, pharmacy pickup. Okay, and then there are those that are, are said to be defaulters these are clients that have or recipients of care that have actually refused to take this, uh, this medication. We have found them, but have refused to take the medication. And there are those that have a known status and, and we'll talk about them uh, as we go on. Also, some, what are some of the causes of, um, of, 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 uh, of losses or interruption in treatment? So one of them is an interruption in treatment, which is, uh, which is called loss to follow up. 
So this is categorized as in three months, um, class that have been on treatment for three months, uh, three to five months and six months to a six months class. So this is um, that part of, of, of uh, interruption. There are those that die uh, and then they will be deemed as lost. There are those that are transed out, transferred out, and those are also considered as um, uh, a loss uh, to, to that particular facility that you are, is being analyzed. Uh, we also look at um, uh, refused. So if a client says, oh, I think I don't want your medication anymore, for whatever reasons, uh, that is also considered as a loss uh, in, in that regard. Okay, and then there are those that are that age. So we are looking specifically at, at, at pediatric clients. So pediatric clients, is a, there's a fine age band. So it's between uh, zero and, and, and about 14 or less than 15, if you want to consider it that way. So that is what, so if anyone that is accessing treatment goes into a next age, then they would have been deemed as technically uh, lost from that cohort, but they, they may be still on in treatment. And there are those that are, are, are have unknown causes. Um, clients that you have followed up, you can't find them. You don't know whether they are lost. You don't know whether they have refused treatment. So those are, are deemed to be lost uh, without a known, with a known cause. So some of them are um, wrong addresses or old addresses or no contact details available. Okay, so sometimes the aging out is also considered as part of the um, unknown causes. Okay, so this just gives us a, a, a small picture of what's been happening in, in the country. So this is some provi um, provincial, but this is national data that is showing us how the, the performance of, of retention has been in the, in the nation. Okay, so this is just looking at specifically the, the, uh, the pediatric age group. And uh, we can see the, in, in the marks that are, or the bars that are blue, uh, shows that we are around 83 to 80. 85% retention, and these are those are that we have retained in care for the past, um, it's about eight quarters, and many we are analyzing this um, uh, in 20, uh, 20, 2021 um, uh, data. Okay. Okay, so this again shows a, a similar picture, um, but just trying to break down in some of the reasons. Remember the IIT that I talked about, it's been brought, which is broken up into the loss to follow up, the trans out, the died, refused, and those that have unknown causes. Okay, so we had a total of about uh, at the beginning of the quarter, um, that's uh, um, FY21 uh, Q3, we had uh, about 45,000. So we were expecting that this should go up to about 53,000 um, recipients of care. So that was expected, adding our uh, reactivated or return to care plus the, um, the new clients. But unfortunately, we see that the draw, we, we actually had a, a drop because this is what we ended up having there, okay, the 43,000. Okay, so we, we see that these other ones dropped off in these categories. Trans out, um, which may not necessarily be uh, supposed to affect you because you have trans out within the country, within the nation. So the, the trans out shouldn't really be uh, part of, of the analysis. But the loss to follow up, these are amounting to about 3,500 children that we lost all over the country. Uh, no, no picking uh, districts or provinces per se, but we, we as a country lost these 3,500 children. We also lost in terms of mortality, 4,441 uh, children. There are about 94 that, that refuse treatment. And then there are those that we cannot categorize um, about 300 and uh, 3,300 3, children without, um, uh, without a known cause, okay? So we'll talk about these in, in, in a bit just uh, way. So this, again, just shows the provinces and uh, implementing partners that are, that are, that are being uh, looked at, so for FY21, Q3, okay? So as a comparison. Okay, so we see that the, the military facilities are the least performing uh, in terms of retention charge, 64%. Uh, the overall national perform performance is at 80%, uh, but we see that even as it is high like that, we see that Northern, uh, Copper Belt, um, uh, Wakula uh, are some of the not so great provinces performing not so great in terms of uh, pediatric retention. We have a, a, a facility or a, a 
province that is doing exceptionally well at 92%, which is Mchinga, and, and we'll look at that uh, in a bit. Okay, so what, how, how do you analyze these, um, this retention? So there are a couple of reports that you could run uh, in smart care, either in legacy or in, in smart care plus. So, um, so one of them is a, a PEPFA MER um, uh, report, which will just compare two periods. So you could say um, between, I want to analyze Q1 and I want to analyze, um, if those, the clients that were active in Q1 are still active at the end of, of Q2. Okay, so, uh, so th that would be the two analysis and then you just compare how the outcome is between those. There's actually a simpler method which you use a report which is called a, an MER comparison report. Um, it's not there in uh, Smart Care um, uh, Plus, but in Smart Care Legacy, uh, you, you find this report and you can easily run this report and it comes as, a, as an Excel sheet which will show you um, period one and period two. And those clients that are in period one will have a, the one uh, marked as, a, as present. And then in period two, if they're not there, it will be indicated as uh, a blank and then indicated in the various uh, categories of IIT, okay, whether lost, dead, um, uh, and trans out, uh, something like that. Yeah, so others um, in facilities, you can also analyze this by using um, a physical count of, uh, of, of files within your facility. And, um, uh, and this is mainly for those that are e-last uh, and uh, we'll see that in a bit. Okay, so we just go to our first poll question. Uh, thank you, Dr. Piri. Uh, so our first poll question is as follows. Mutale is a stable adolescent on 6MMD accessing treatment at your facility. A month after her last dispensation, she requests a transfer to another facility. Regarding TX car, which is correct? A, recipient of care will be counted as a loss to follow up. B, recipient of care will be counted at both facilities. C, recipient of care will be counted any of the two facilities. D, recipient of care will be counted as a refused as a refused treatment. So uh, we've started the poll. I'll allow a minute for um, everyone to participate. I encourage everyone to participate on the call. So far, we only have nine of the 305 participants uh, of the 305 participants on the call. Kindly um, participate. Oh, Kote, has the, has the polling ended? I see it has ended. Can we, yeah, okay. So we can uh, restart uh, participating. I'll give a minute for this. I must say this is a tricky question. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of tricky, and I'll explain that in a bit. Yeah. yeah so yeah, so that we can I try and analyze it together. I, I thought it was a, a nice question to try and figure out. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Okay, so I'll end the polling. Okay, All so right. I go. Yeah, Let I me can just share the results. Um, ah. So we have a majority of uh, majority of the participants thinking the answer is C, with the least um, being D. Uh, yeah, this is this is quite impressive. So yeah, I'll yeah. start sharing. You can continue, Doctor Pew. Okay, so thank you very much. So, so yeah, so we're just trying to analyze that. So, so what are some of the causes of um, of interruption in treatment? 
So interruption in treatment, well, I tried to break it down into um, two um, levels. There are those that are client-based uh, reasons, uh, which include self-trans out, um, temporary accessing treatment at another site, um, a disease uh, death not reported to the facility. And then there are also those that are system-based, okay, uh, not, not updating uh, files in, in ELAS facilities. And then those that are late um, or have some late disclosures and some, some, some issues. And those that are, are trans out with multi-month uh, description. And this is where some of our question comes from. So in most facilities, when you, when you trans out a client with multi-month uh, description, you find that this client will not be counted in the mother facility and also in the next facility where they're supposed to, to go to. Because most likely they will have medication and they will not um, report at the next facility until they run out of the medication. So that is usually a challenge uh, in, in terms of um, retention. So what we usually encourage is that once you are transing out a client, trans them out with a minimal uh, amount of, 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 um, of drugs, most likely about a month of, of supply, so that by, by the end of the month, they can actually be reported at the next, uh, they can report to the next site. Okay, so that's where our question was coming from. So other causes include mortality. And we know that uh, amongst pediatric clients, malnutrition, um, tuberculosis, malaria, and diarrhea are amongst the top causes of, of, of death. Okay, so, and these are all preventable causes in terms of ATP management. Okay, so let's just go to the next question as we, um, as we try to buy some time. Uh, second question is as follows. Nessie and her children and her three children access treatment at your facility. Two of her children, Mike, male five, and Michelle, female three, are seen on the pediatric ART day, while Messi and her, her three month old um, HIV exposed infant are seen in MCH. How can appointments be optimized? A, treatment is fine as it is. B, all four recipients can be seen together under family model. C, all three children can be seen on PDRT day. D, none of the above. So we can start the, the poll. So I will... Okay, I'll allow a minute uh, for, for, for enough participants to actually participate in the polling. This is another interesting question. All right, uh, we've got five seconds left. Four, three, two, one, I'll end the poll. Okay, just uh, a review of the results. Um, interestingly, we have majority going for uh, B with the least going for D. I'll hand over back to you, Dr. Piri. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, so we'll look at some of the best practices that we, that we have that improve pediatric retention. And these may not only apply to pediatric clients, they may also apply to, to other groups like adolescents and also the, the adults. So one of them is um, um, uh, uh, peer uh, prior reminders and also systematic re uh, uh, client review. A peer pairing, a family centered approach, and then weekend clinics, uh, scholar models, and um, caregiver support groups. And obviously, obviously multi month dispensation. So, we'll quickly go into these ones um, individually uh, just to, to get a glimpse of what, what each one talks about. Uh, others are disease prevention, like uh, prevention of, of, uh, of TB through provision of TPT for those that are above a, a year old, and also uh, preventing, uh, providing septin to all pediatric clients that are less than 
five years old. Remember that this does not only provide, prevent, um, uh, obviously, toxoplasmosis and isospora, but all those other what are seen complicated uh, diseases in, in, or advanced HIV diseases, but also even just the regular diarrhea is reduced in, in, in pediatric clients uh, because they are taking um, septic. So systematic review. So this is, um, you know, when you usually see a client, you usually get, um, you quickly switch to um, start seeing the client without actually getting some detail of what, who you are reviewing. So one of the key things is to review the viral load, uh, the weight, and always check your uh, update your client's um, uh, contact details at each and every visit. Remember, people can can change within a month, within two months, they can change their their location. And always discuss or ask about about disclosure. So here is a is a is an extract from SmartCare um, uh, Legacy. So there's a there's a point um, which which is found on your menu here. Okay, so when you look at menu. When you press menu, it will bring this in uh, dialogue. And then you pick on uh, patient uh, reports, which is number two, uh, home, then patient reports. Once you get to patient reports, it takes you to a page like this, which has graphs, uh, problem lists, uh, medications, and lists of uh, report lists. Okay, so here it can give you a quick guide on what you need to what you do, what you need to, to to have. So like vitals, you can check quickly what the vitals have been over a period of time. Um, yeah, period of time, temperature and, uh, and other, other aspects, okay? Um, under immunology and um, immuno and, and zero, okay, you can get your CD4 count, you can get your percentage, and you can also get your viral load um, uh, uh, for, for each client. Okay, so this is how it looks like. So this just gives you a quick guide. Uh, so this shows both of them. Um, this is viral load and, and, and weight. So the viral load is the one which is in um, um, brownish. Okay, and then the, the weight is quite uh, quite low here um, with the numbers that are. So it will give you a quick guide on how, how the child has been performing. Okay, uh, and the, whether the weight is increasing or decreasing. Okay, and this is the uh, viral load. This plant is, is actually suppressed uh, for now. This, that was in SmartCare um, uh, Legacy. And in SmartCare Plus, you have this interaction where you have um, this dashboard. Those of us that are familiar with SmartCare Plus, you find this under charts. And under charts, you have your weight, you have your uh, viral load. And this is actually showing the viral load for, for the clients that, we, are, that we, we try to sample out. So this is quite like a quick guide to show you how this client is, is doing. So appointment management, is one of the key things that we need to, to make sure that it's being done. So uh, all clients need to be reminded at least five to seven days prior to them coming to your facility. And this uh, can also be done a day prior to, to, to them coming to your facility. And also uh, a reminder on the actual day when you see that they are not coming, uh, you say, okay, can you, have you come? Like, are you going to still make it? Should we wait for you until you come? Okay, and then the next thing is that if a client misses an appointment, they need to be followed up immediately. On the, on the same day, a call can be made. If not, at least within 24 hours, the, the client now should move from the appointment register into the, um, the CAT register or the community ART tracking register. And here, you're going to use, first of all, a phone call for where the phone is available or a home visit, to find out where the client is um, in, in that regard. And always schedule all appointments, clinical and laboratory on the same day. That's where you say, oh, maybe the viral load is going to be due in the next month. Then you say, okay, I won't give you a month's supply, then you come back after, after a, a, a month. Um, uh, so that's, that's not a very good uh, process. You need to make sure that uh, the client is coming in for all those appointments and they are scheduled together. If a client comes in, the viral load is maybe in about two or three months ahead, Collect it at that point so that you can, you can have all of them aligned to one uh, appointment visit. So this is just a DSD model. Remember that our DSD models always look at when, where, who, and what is going to be provided. And the client is usually the center, not usually, but is the center of everything that we are providing. Okay. Ensure that disclosure, <clears throat> oh, this is another uh, good practice. Disclosure is important for all our pediatric clients, okay? either uh, to, to the caregiver or to the, to the, to the client, uh, him or herself, okay? So 
So we have, uh, we won't talk so much about the young child who's zero to uh, 12, because we won't, won't see, they won't maybe get so much, but we'll talk about the five to seven, where you need to discuss just some issues, some you know, that they have an illness that they need to, to, to talk about and also encourage them to, to uh, ensure that they are eating well, they are, they are, they are keeping themselves clean, they are exercising, and that this medication is helping their body to, 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 to stay healthy. Um, uh, you are not lying to them to say, no, this medicine is for a cough, or this medicine is for, for a heart disease that you have. That may not be a good, and you need to be asking this at each and every visit. For eight to, to 11 year olds, eight olds, you begin to highlight to say, the germ that you had is actually a virus, and the virus is very clever. And when this virus is, is medication is not taken, the virus becomes stronger and starts to defeat your body, uh, soldiers, you know, something like that. Okay. Um, and uh, 11 to 14 years here, you do the full disclosure. And the full disclosure will go on to, to discuss what the, the issues are. You talk about sexual development, you talk about uh, how they are they're going to be able to be there. Okay. So this is actually, if you want to read more in detail about this, it's found in your, um, the, the 2020 guidelines um, on page 73. And you can just go through and just highlight and appreciate what it talks about. Okay, so remember that in smart care um, legacy, you need to be uh, uh, updating this part, which is the disclosure part, which is talking about uh, clicking uh, each point is a client come with the same guardian, and also uh, highlighting the disclosure process. Okay, uh, poll question number three. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Dr. Kiri. Question number three. Peter is an 11, is an 11 years uh, child living with HIV at your facility on three months dispensation. Mother, why is this to enroll? Uh, I should think this should be mother wishes to enroll him um, six MMD. What are your next best best steps? A. Immediately prescribe six MMD. B. Check client weight, feel address, and provide six MMD. C. Advise mother that client is not eligible for six MMD. I'll repeat the question. Peter is an eleven-year-old uh, child living with HIV at your facility, and on three MMD. Mother, mother wishes to enroll him on 6-MMD. What are your next best steps? A, immediately prescribe 6-MMD. B, check client's weight, VL address, and provide 6-MMD. C, advise mother that client is not eligible for 6-MMD. Dr. Piri, you are, you are setting very interesting questions, huh? Um, thanks. I, I don't know the right response to that. Maybe should be put as a poll also so that I click on. <laughs> yeah, they're very interesting. Yeah. And I, I wish to um, re-echo what you said on um, and ensuring that the VO is done today if the VO will be due in two to three months. I think that's where... Um, uh, sometimes we have it wrong as clinicians. We want to bleed when the deal is due. Yeah, yeah, very important. Yeah, so we need to ensure that it's being done together at, uh, at the same time. Yes. Um, yeah. We are past one minute, so I'll end the poll and share the results. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So um, impressive uh, results. We have majority going for B, the least going for A. We've got yeah. a good, uh, we've got a good audience. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and I, I like that they are very active. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, team on the call. Okay, so we will rush through. I know I, we are slightly behind on, on time, so we'll try and do it. So multi-month uh, dispensation. So for pediatric clients, a multi-month dispensation is, is one of the critical things that we can improve and also um, lessen the visits. You know, they, our, our, our recipients of care don't want to come every time to the, to the hospital. Yeah, they only want to, to come there once now. So one of the things that this client has to be at least two years old or above. Um, uh, the client should have been on treatment at least for a year uh, and should be suppressed. 
and disclosure process uh, uh, should have started. Okay, so here uh, it's, a hard, it's not a hard and fast rule that the disclosure process must have started, but at least it should have started. Okay, um, and then uh, I've not put the age um, that is by memo, but um, mostly we do we give six months MMD for those that are above ten years, but you can actually give six months MMD even for those that are less than ten years. But you just need to be a little careful with um, how you dispense that that medication. Okay, so uh, something that we look about talk about. Okay, so uh, I brought this up so that we just look at how the multi month uh, prescription is done. It may be absolute, absolute, obsolete now uh, since we have DTG in most of the facilities. But this is something where you can actually prescribe your DTG uh, here. You put your ABC there, your three TC there. And then your, your, your PDDG or DTG there with the 10 milligrams um, being highlighted there. Okay, always disclose, always put the adherence issues that they're having. If a client has adherence issues, keep and keep which issues they're having. Is it because they are vomiting? Is it because they have yellow eyes? Is it because they have certain side effects? Or is there, are there any reasons they're forgetting, they're forgetful? Okay, so we need to have all those um, aspects. Um, being talked about. Peer pairing, you know, there's no one else that knows the challenges that are there about taking medication apart from someone that has actually gone through um, that uh, taking of medication. And peer pairing, that's why it shows that it's, it's actually a very effective way of, of um, re maintaining retention. This, uh, we are dealing with pediatric clients, so um, peer pairing can either be with them, uh, the caregiver themselves paired with another caregiver that is uh, taking care of a child using another mentor models, or this could be an adolescent mentor or an adolescent peer educator that will support the other adolescent in taking the medication. So most effective uh, amongst older clients or, or older adolescents, but also as talked about through um, uh, adolescent uh, uh, PMTCT uh, champions or uh, mother mentors, okay? Can also be done for those that have a high viral load, uh, so someone can also support someone that is taking medication for those that are high viral load, uh, have a high viral load. Okay, so and then I was talked about by caregivers. Family-centered approach, we have talked about this in one of the uh, four questions. As family-centered approach, you bring all the family members to come together and take the medication, or take the, uh, have the same appointment. This may not occur for all clients. There are those that are older, they would want to be seen on their own, but if you have, um, a mother that has uh, uh, three children, like in our story, um, that are quite young, they are accessing uh, services uh, that are just very similar, they can be seen uh, together in, in, that, um, in that session, okay? And then do not overwhelm the system. If you feel that your system is not going to allow for all this to come on the same day, do not attempt to, uh, to use that family model uh, in that regard. You have weekend clinics, and these weekend clinics will provide all the necessary um, ART services, including the lab services, collection of VLs, uh, growth monitoring. These are quite key for, for, for an adolescent that is growing up. Okay, scholar models for all the children uh, that are going to school are put into one cohort, which will come during the school holidays. And these school holidays will provide all the treatment, all the viral loads, or the change of regimens, or the prescription for six months, or prescription for three months as they go to boarding schools. This is a scholar model, and this usually works very well uh, where you have um, uh, staff that can work over the weekend. Okay, yeah. So this is um, is quite key. And during those services, you can also talk about uh, sexual reproductive services. Hold your adolescent support group meeting on that day and collect everything uh, that you need to collect. Uh, for that, uh, for those clients. Okay, support group meetings as talked about all the support group meetings, you need to make sure that they are in two separate groups, um, the four, 10 to 14, where you, the, you know the topics may not be very similar to those that are 15 to 19. So the topics are a little bit, oh, okay, just take care of yourself uh, and all that. But for 15 to 19, you start talking about sexual and reproductive health services um, as, as, go, as we go on. But make sure that they, Disclosure has been done to all those um, clients because sometimes you start, you begin to talk about uh, HIV when someone well, hasn't really been disclosed uh, to 
So it becomes as a challenge uh, later on. So what are some of, some of the summary points that we need to get out? Uh, you need a systematic way of how you review your clients. You just don't see client comes, start reviewing. Uh, you need to have a background of who you are reviewing. Okay, when you have a background of who you are reviewing, you can actually structure your intervention. I think I'm going to see ABC. I need to talk about ABC. Okay, retention expresses the quality of service that you that you provide at the at the facility. So if your services are poor, your retention is going to be poor. If your services are quite excellent, uh, you're going towards an, a center of excellence. You're going to have good retention, and that's why we want each one of you that is in, on this call to ensure that you are. Yeah, you are at this um, you are at this level of the center of excellence. Okay, uh, IIT is um, is preventable. Uh, engage, current uh, engagement of uh, of uh, recipients of care and good appointment management is one of the key things that we need to talk about. All family members can be seen on the same day, and do not forget about the top ten causes of death amongst the pediatric clients. That is, malnutrition. TB, um, malaria, and also diarrheal diseases, all that are preventable and can be um, uh, tackled with, uh, with relative ease once managed uh, properly. I think I end here, uh, Dr. Chiro. Now, just a, a quick one. Thank you to everyone that helped uh, in the presentation. I got some pictures from, from some websites. I got some data from uh, Dr. Meg and uh, Dr. Kozia and everyone here of the uh, experts that are on the call, uh, we, we, we helped, uh, helped out with, um, with some of the data and uh, output. Otherwise, thank you very much for, for listening in. Dr. Chilo, over to you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Piri. Um, very enjoyed the session very informative and simple and straight to the point um do you have uh, the uh, post presentation poll questions that we can be to just see if uh, retention has occurred so we'll go through the poll questions uh again uh, before we go to the q and a so um Poll question one, Mutale is a stable adolescent on 6MMD accessing treatment at your facility. A month, after, a month after her last dispensation, she requests a transfer to another facility. Regarding sex care, which is correct? A, recipient of care will be counted as a loss to follow up. B, recipient of care will be counted at both facilities. C, Recipient of care will be counted any of the two facilities at Such any of the two facilities. Yes. Then the recipient of uh, care will be counted as a refused treatment. So we can start the polling uh, quickly so that uh, Dr. Piri can go uh, through the questions with us. Is, is IT going to share? So IT has shared. I'll give 30 seconds since we are pros now to the questions. Then uh, we'll have a discussion. Okay, so I end the poll. So yeah. yes, yes. So, so let me just talk to. It. So it, first of all, it will not be a obviously it's not going to be a refusal. Uh, so this one person, yeah, it's, it's good to to be a refusal, but it's not a refusal, and it's not um, a loss to follow up because remember this is a client that has requested for a trans out, so they actually a trans out at one facility. The correct answer is C. Um, such as supposed to read recipients recipient of care will be 
will not be counted at any of the two facilities. They're not counted at their facility and they're not counted on the other facility in terms of TX cap. So the answer is, 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 is C and 62% uh, yes, you'd say they are, it's, it's correct. Yeah, so that's the answer. We we'll get to the second poll question. Mercy and her three children access treatment at your facility. Two of her children, Mike, male five, and Michelle, female three, are seen on the pediatric ART day, while Mercy and her three month old HIV exposed infant are seen in MCH. How can appointments be optimized? A, treatment is fine as it is. Uh, B, all four recipients of care can be seen together under facility model. C, all three children can be seen on PEDS, ART, D, D, none of the above. So I'll allow uh, 30 seconds as well for the um, audience to participate in the poll. Then we'll have uh, Dr. Piri give us more insight on what is the best answer. Sharon, are you able to see it now? Okay. Thank you, Sharon, for the feedback. Okay, so thank you very much. So yes, the correct answer is B. And what we are trying to do here is to make sure that the, the appointment is, um, um, is optimized for, for that particular family. And um, um, yeah, so the appointment is 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 quite uh, is quite 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 correct in the way that it is. Okay, so all all clients can be seen on one day. Uh, mother, we don't want the mother to bring uh, child A or brings Miss uh, brings Michelle on one day. Messi and uh, Michelle and Mike on one day. Then comes for our own treatment. No, we just want her to come once. Everything is done, then she goes. Uh, she goes back. This will be for younger children, for children that are slightly older. Uh, maybe she has an, an eleven-year-old, a twelve-year-old, or even a fifteen-year-old. Those can come on their own pediatric day uh, for 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 treatment. Um, yeah, yeah. We can go on to the last one. So I know we are behind uh, time. Okay. So uh, Chatonda and Tim, uh, can you uh, beam the poll questions as I'm reading them out so that we can give enough time for. Uh, the team on the call to participate. So poll question three, Peter is an, is an uh, Peter is 11 years, uh, is an 11 years old living with HIV at the facility and on three MMD. Mother wishes to enroll him on six MMD. What are your, ne what are your next best steps? A, immediately prescribe six MMD. B, Check client weight, VL address, and provide six MMD. C advise mother that client is not eligible for six MMD. So um, I'll end the poll uh, here and see the results. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, Maybe I wasn't clear on something. So the the 10, the 12 that are answered C, actually pediatric clients are eligible for six months MMD. Um, so, and this, I picked on an 11 year old um, who's just maybe coming from another region and they were providing three, three MMD. You can provide six months MMD for this particular client. But one of the key things that you need to do, you need to check the weight, you need to check there, viral load, whether it's due on that day or it's due maybe in the next month or so, uh, so that you collect it on that day. 
you need to check the address. You need to also do, you need to check the address because maybe they may have changed their address, okay? So just in case they go uh, away with so much medication and they stop coming to you, you need to make sure that the address is, is correct, okay? And then you provide your six months MMD. So you can provide six months MMD for, for children that are, um, that are on your car and it makes your, um, it will work a little lighter. Thank you. So thank you for those that answered me. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Piri. I'll just go to the chat box and look at the questions. We've got interesting questions coming through. Um, the first question was coming from uh, Rabi, though it's uh, not really related to the topic on hand, but he's asking if uh, first line drugs can cause amnesia. Then um, we had another, the next question coming from uh, Senga. just a minute. What happens to our DST clients, for example, clients clinical due, clinical due today, but the VO is due in December or January. So I guess she's trying to ask, do we give six months to these uh, clients? Then Melody also has a question. Does not bleeding three or so months before a client is due affect the VO coverage somehow? So I, I guess this is, this is in relation to uh, when yeah. reports are generated. Yeah. So no, it, so it's- If you so can pick answer, up those three, then we- Yeah, answering the Melody's question, the answer would be no, it doesn't affect your, your viral load coverage. But did you pick the very first viral load coverage? A viral load that you put in there. So when you get your and you, you get your result and you enter your viral load in there, you are actually the one that is going to put the, the range of the of the day. Okay. So you're going to put collected on this day and then it ends on another day. So it will it will not affect your, your viral load coverage. And then for the um, uh, uh, so for those that are on DSD, make sure that uh, everyone maybe it's, I don't know which DSD you're, you're talking about. But if it's, let's say, for example, it's a CAG, make sure that the CAG or the UAG, all of them are, have one VL um, uh, collection day. So that one, one of those months, they'll just come together and then they, they are dispensed or they are, the viral load is collected at the same time. And if they are ahead, um, let's say to September, uh, okay, so you know that it's going to be in March or in, in, in April, uh, you can actually collect it now so that it matches up with the next, with the other visits that are going to come um, a much ahead. Okay. Over to you, um, Dr. Dr. Chiba. Okay, so I'll just read out the next sets of uh, questions and comments. So we've got a question from Abigail uh, Kasong, Kasong, Kasongo. Uh, she says, Thank you for the good presentation, doctor. But from what I know is that children who are less than five years are considered to have advanced HIV and 6 MMD is only given in recipients of care who are stable. But according to your presentation, you mentioned that 6 MMD can be given in children above two years, meaning less than five years. Kindly, clarif kindly clar clarify on that. Then Dr. Zimba uh, says, um, Love the presentations, the slides were on point and the polls were interesting, thumbs up. Thank you, Dr. Zimba. Uh, these are just uh, um, recommendations. Uh, okay, 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 so we have another uh, comment from Dr. Bosco. Uh, children less than five years who have been receiving ART for more than one year and who are stable clinically or virologically should not be considered to have um, advanced HIV disease and should be eligible for multi-month dispensation. I guess he was answering um, Abigail's question. And uh, Dr. Onoya has uh, a question uh, for poll question number one, how to ensure that the patient is not double counted if we say that the patient can can be counted at any one of both facilities. So there was clarity made to that, that um, uh, C was supposed to be, will not be counted um, at, at uh, both facilities. Then uh, the last question, uh, the last question um, 
on this lot, uh, what is the minimum qualifying weight for 6 MMD? Um, I think we can answer those questions. And uh, Dr. Curie, don't feel alone. We've got a panel of experts that we can still refer to. Um, um, yes. Yes, yes. The answer, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll call on the, the panel of experts to, to make. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, in terms of uh, six, so advanced HIV will be considered for those that are less than two years. So, uh, three, four, five going upwards technically do not, um, are not advanced HIV disease uh, clients, basically. Uh, so, you can actually give six months of MMD as already discussed by Dr. Bosco. Um, so that's that's already cleared up. So uh, uh, what is the weight? So it's not based by weight. It's actually based by um, whether the client is stable or has any underlying uh, diseases. So you don't consider uh, weight. It's not a it's not a parameter for uh, uh, yeah, six months MMD. Um, yeah. So that's that's uh, uh, critical. Then I saw another question. Do we give six months MMD to this child where they have adherence issues, especially if the mother or caregiver is not uh, cooperative. So you do not give six months MMT for this one that has no adherence issues, because you'd want to sort out the adherence issues first, then you, you, you continue with the six months MMT. So it's not a punishment per se, but you're just trying to make sure that as they go uh, home, they're actually taking that medication. That is the reason why you need to make sure that this is being done. Yeah, and um, just to add on what you've said is that for, for children that are about five years, less than 10 years, we ensure that they've got good uh, social support. That's one of the issues that we have to consider in those uh, in that age range. Then we've got comments uh, from we've got a, we've got comment from Courtney Mukongwe. I think it's essential to to ensure children have a supportive environment towards good adherence, assurance of good adherence to prevent them from regressing, having a high VL once put on 6MMD. Um, very important, uh, Courtney, thank you very much. Then Judith Nalavwe, um, kindly clarify which age group are, are we looking at? Because we believe that children increase weight at a very fast rate. Then uh, Flavia, says, but according to the 2021 guideline of management of advanced HIV disease, they are considered as having advanced HIV. Then um, Katoka Chihula says, I've missed the presentation, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so just the last answer. one from Conrad, <laughs> the last one from Conrad, then we'll move to the next section. So kindly clarify, all children younger than five years with HIV are considered as having advanced HIV. This, this is one of the statements in the um, advanced HIV disease presentation. Um, so we can answer those, then we can move to the next uh, segment. <laughs> okay, so I think that we, we are quite behind with time. So I'll, I'll try to be as, as quick as possible. Um, Okay, Dr. Manzi is trying to, to answer your question. Yes, uh, Dr. Manzi can go ahead. Thank you so much, Dr. Piri and uh, Dr. Chirwa. So I would, I would just like to clarify on the issue of um, advanced HIV and mouth mouth dispensation in um, children. So it's true, yes, children uh, below the age of five are considered uh, to have advanced HIV. However, the statement that was in the presentation was saying children above two years and five years can be considered for mouth mouth dispensation. When we say mouth mouth dispensation, we're not saying 6 MMD. So this includes uh, 3 MMD, that's mouth mouth dispensation. During this period, the weight of the child, yes, uh, they grow faster compared to children between the age of five and 10. So that's why the, the Ministry of Health guided to say for children above the age of five, whose weight is stable, you can consider giving them six month uh, dispensation. However, the guidance is that any child above the age of 10, because at the age of 10, the anticipated weight is somewhere around 25. And um, the, 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 in that weight, you're looking at what you are giving them. 
you will not be changing the regimen unlike someone eh. whose weight is less than that. So even as we practice, we have to put certain things into consideration, uh, looking at um, what regimen are you giving? How often are you going to change? Because for children, we give according to the weight band. So that's my contribution on that. Eh. To be on a safer side, if you're not sure, children above the age of 10, are eligible for 6MMD. But for those less than uh, uh, 10, then you have to consider their stability. That is the weight is stable. They don't have any adherence issues. They don't have a high viral load. Then you can consider 6MMD. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Manzi for that. Yeah, so just like say uh, already said, three months MMD is, is part of the MMD for, 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 for children. Multi-month dispensation yes. can be any any medication, any months given beyond uh, the usual one month uh, of, of medication. So if you're providing three months MMD, that is already a multi-month dispensation in, in, in children. It's not only six, uh, six MMD that, that qualifies as a multi-month dispensation. Okay, there was a question also from, um, uh, if I can find it quickly. Uh, yeah, I think I've lost it somewhere. Yeah, so you know, um, we can go to the next sessions as I read the other ones, and then I can respond as part of the closing remarks. Okay. Um. Thank you very much. Do we have any comments from uh, the other experts? I have a comment. I don't know if you can get me. Hello, can you get me? Yes, uh, we can, but though are faint and it's uh, Sorry, maybe... I, I'm in a I'm in a vehicle. Let me see. Yeah. So thanks very much, uh, Doctor, for the presentation. I think it was quite good. I just wanted to re-emphasize on the MMD points that Dr. Manzi raised. I think there's a tendency sometimes to think MMD is about six MMD. Even three months is the multi-month dispensation. So that's important to consider. And uh, for the very young children between two and five years, you can, they can get three MMD and you consider it as a multi-month dispensation. And then after five to seven years, you will need to weigh and see if they are stable weight-wise and other conditions before you can consider six MMD. But one other issue I wanted to add over pediatric retention is about um, the primary caregiver probably having to disclose the child's status to one other person in the house. This is very important for continuity of care. We have these children with changing caregivers who are left in the care of a caregiver who doesn't know what is wrong with the child. And so they may miss appointments or they may not be given the medicine the way they're supposed to take the medicine. So it's important as we are educating a primary caregiver to have at least one other person in the household who's able to take care of that child in case of an emergency or the primary caregiver has traveled out without having an uh, interruption in treatment. So I thought I should add that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moviana. Very important point there. And do we have any more comments from the panel of experts before we move to the echo case? Okay, if we don't have uh, any more comments, we can go to the echo coming from uh, Kawe Women and Newborn Hospital. Mr. Brian Chipatela, are you on the call with us? Mr. Brian Chipatela, are you on the call with us? Um, can we still uh, share the echo case on behalf of Kawe? Though, unfortunately, Sorry, if Dr. there are any clarification, we will we'll not be able to make them. Yes? 
if uh, Mr. Chipatela is not uh, on the call, Mr. or oh, Dr. Chalwe from Kawa Newborn uh, and Women Hospital can present. Okay, so Mr. Chipatel is actually asking if he can be muted. Um, Tatonda and Tim, can we um, unmute Mr. Chipatela so that you'll be able to share with us his case? And um, we can share the case with the, with the team if we have it. Kote, are you able to share the echo, the echo presentation? Okay, yes, we are able to share, except um, it, Mr. Chipatela is uh, a co-host, so he should be able to unmute himself. We are unfortunately unable to forcefully unmute people. Okay, so Mr. Chipatela, you can unmute yourself. Okay, okay. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Can you ensure that other devices are, 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 not, are not connected? Um, via audio as you present, otherwise you'll be getting echoes. Okay, thank you, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir, how are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chipatela, you can guide the team. Um, they'll be sharing on your behalf. They are sharing on your behalf. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, so our presentation uh, coming from Kaba Women, Children's Hospital this afternoon. Uh, this is our child on demographic, demographics of Gota. Uh, a child by the initials of CF, female of five years old, uh, with residence of Kabul Makururu area. The, the date of birth is the uh, 16th of October 2016. The region, the child is a Christian. First medical history, there is no history of diabetes, no history of epilepsy, no history of sickle cell disease, no history of asthma, non RVD RS since 10th of September 2019. Is of presenting complaint. A uh, patient came in for a routine follow-up visit in LRT clinic, but presented with uh, the complaints of fever, diarrhea, learning nose, and the cough for a week. Uh, the child in January 2020 was lost to follow-up up to the month of April, but the mother verbally reported that the child was receiving the drugs from a local office as a passerby in Indora. From the time of LRT session, we have noticed that the child misses most of the appointment days that have been uh, given. On the drug history, current LRT regimen, the child was on, uh, was on ABC, FPC, PDTG, and INH, which was given in two, as 200 milligrams OD for TPT on the 20th of May, 2021. Family history, the noise of diabetes, noise of epilepsy, noise of sickle cell, noise of asthma, noise of TB, noise of hypertension, she is the first born child with no siblings. Immunization and maternal history, mother on at one HIV test and natally in the second trimester, which was negative by, the, by then, and tested the active together with the child on the 10th of September, 2019. Social history, uh, the, the child lives with the mother only because parents are on separation at the moment, and the mother does a little bit of business. Next slide. On the examination, sorry, on examination, general condition was stable. There was no pallor, no jaundice, no cyanosis. The chest was clear. Uh, a cardiovascular S1, S2, head organ. Local examination, no signs of 8% of O2.
Are we able to hear Mr. Chipatela? Um, no, we are not able to hear him. Okay. Um, do we have any other representative from uh, Kawe uh, Newborn Hospital to, to help us with the presentation? As we are waiting for him to uh, come back on. Okay, we can go to the next slide while we wait for Mr. Spatella. Kote, we can go to the next slide due to time. Okay, so when it comes to the treatment and investigation history, we see that in 2019, November, um, the child was uh, investigated for TB and they did not, um, uh, they did not um, uh, get any uh, positive result for TB. Um, when it came to the biochemistries, um, they, okay, so he's saying he can't admit himself. So when it came to the biochemistries, we see that uh, AST was elevated, the rest were normal. HB was low, 9.5, white cell count was 12, platelets were normal, 265. VL at that time, baseline was high at 10,000, and CD4 was 1,647, percentage 19%. So CAT, TAT were negative, Regimens put was um, ABC, 3GC, Lopinava, together with septrin, folic acid, and adherence counseling. So we can see that over the years, in 2021, uh, uh, September, clients had a high VL and was put on EAC while on the same uh, regimen and septrin. Uh, CD4 count was 1,200, though we don't have a percentage there. Then uh, three months, Three to four months later, the client's VO was repeated. It was um, still high, though lower than the previous result. Uh, clients continued on ABC, 3TC, Lopinava. Um, IAC was continued. Then in, uh, in July, in July 2022, the uh, VO dropped to 1,149. Patient was switched to uh, a DTG based regimen in April 2022. Um, in August of 2022, urine lamb uh, was negative. HB was 10.6. Um, white cell count was borderline high at 10. I, I can't see the platelets. Uh, patient continues to be on ABC 3TT DTG. So, uh, Kote, are you able to unmute Mr. Patela? He's asking if he can be unmuted. While we're waiting for him, we can go to the next slide. Mr. Patela is actually unmuted. Okay, he, he can continue. Mr. Patela, you can continue. Yes. Well, uh, yeah. so, uh, okay. Summarize okay. this slide. We can go to the next one. Okay, yeah, there was another side that, that we added on the, after doing the edit, where we had the key issues that we have found. Okay, sure, think. no problem, you can go ahead. Is that side still available? I, I did not see uh, that section. Maybe you read it out for us. Selling this chart. Hello. Are we able to get me start, Patela? I'm able to get to. Are you able to get me that side? Uh, you. We lost you a bit there. You can begin on the added information. Oh, oh. Hello. 
Mr. Chipatela, you can uh, go ahead with the added information. This slide okay. has been summarized. Okay, yeah. So on the other slide that we noted, there are some other issues that were not put on the history. Well, we discover the child, uh, uh, the mother, the child was, uh, we allocated one of the community staff from one of our partners, the ICAP2. So she's been following up this child, I think, time after time. Unfortunately, the mother does little business, which is quite mobile, but within the district. So every time they make a follow up, most they find that the child and the mother are not home since they just did the two of them. So unless she follows the child, the mother to the market where they are, she's doing the business from, that's when she is able to talk to them. So we discover that the mother's viral is okay. She's suppressed, uh, which was done in July this, this year. But for the child, the virus has kept on being like that because she never used to give the, the dosages that were supposed to be given in the evenings. So she only used to give the morning dosages. So we tried to combine to make the dosage to be optimal, made it to be given at once or D. So at least to make it easier for the child to give the medication before she leaves the market. She goes always leaves for the market. Yeah. And then the other thing that we discovered is uh, the mother has no other relative that she's disclosed to that can help her in terms of reminding the child to get the medication. So every time the child is supposed to be given the medication, it's supposed to come from the mother. The other person that she stays with is a seven, a great seven year old girl who is not uh, aware of the condition for the child. And then the mother has been also noted knowing that uh, she's uh, too much into alcohol. So sometimes in the evenings, we discover that she takes alcohol and she forgets to take the, to give the child the medication. And the child sometimes goes with the father. The father comes to get the child for a week without giving the medication. It's like there's two of those disputes that are going on, on the, as a family. Thank you. Um, do we still have the same questions? We are remaining with the questions that the team has for... Okay. So you can go ahead, Mr. Brown. Okay, so our questions for today concerning this case was, what could be the reason why the child is still unsuppressed despite being transferred into DTG-based regimen? And our second question is, how can we manage this child better? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chipatela. That's the summary of the case. We are dealing with a female five years. Uh, in the previous, um, in the previous slide, this is the only child, right? So we're dealing with a five-year-old um, recipient of care, uh, soon to be six years next month, uh, who presented with uh, fever, diarrhea, running nose cold for one week. Although it's not stated when exactly um, she came in with these uh, symptoms, She's been, um, she's been um, on, she's RVDR for three years now, lost to follow since January 2020. January 2020, um, history of poor adherence and uh, social support uh, due to mother's uh, mobile uh, mo mobility and also um, issues to do with um, uh, separation of uh, the mother from the dad. Uh, currently, the uh, child is on ABC 3 to C, uh, pediatric DTG. Prior to this, was on a Lopinava base regimen. Uh, child uh, came. Uh, child um, has been high view since uh, September 2021. Um, so the team is asking, what could be the reasons why the child is still unsuppressed despite being transitioned to DTG in April 2022? And how can we manage this child better? And I have to also take note that this is a child who's who's been followed up by ICAP three. Um, so even as we are answering, we need to bear in mind that we're already uh, providing some form of social support. Um, so I will now um, I, I will now uh, make time for the 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 people on the call to. Um, uh, ask questions, give comments to the uh, to the presentation that has been made. Thank you.
So we have uh, two hands raised uh, from Mr. Kevin Tishala and also Rabi. You can go ahead and make your contributions. So we've got a comment from, um, we've got comments in the chat box. So, uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Zimba says, from the history, adherence remains a challenge. A person will not be attended until this is addressed. Um, Danny uh, stated that poor adherence is leading to an suppressed melody banda. From the scenario, the problem is adherence, not the drugs. It could be DTG based regimen, but if not taken correctly, then work done is equal to zero. The mother doesn't give the child the medicine correctly. This could be like that because she's reacting towards her separation from the husband. In such more often than not, I feel cancel the mother strongly. So Kato uh, Katsihula says, adherence is the main challenge for that child. Mr. Kelvin Tichala, unable to, oh, sorry. So Mr. Kelvin is unable to mute and mute himself. So can the um, IT assist him to do so? Then Mr. Bonnie says, can he do a genotype testing for chances of resistance? I strongly feel the adherence is still the problem. So with the above sub submission, So uh, Dr. Zimba, can you unmute yourself and maybe uh, give clarity to what you stated in the chat box? Um, your comment is, ICAP-3 need to be engaged to provide targeted support. So ICAP-3 is already um, on the case. Um, uh, the presenter did uh, state that whenever they visit the, the mother and the child, often they will not find the tool. Yeah. So, um, okay, Atonda, can we allow participants to unmute themselves and give their contributions? I see a number of hands that that have been unable to to unmute themselves and give their contributions. Thank you. Okay, um, please go ahead. They can unmute themselves. Am I audible, Doc? Yes, sir. You can go ahead. All right, thank you very much. Um, from what I've gotten from the presentation uh, by our colleagues, uh, I think like everyone has mentioned, uh, I, I, I do not think that we need even to think of changing the line of treatment for this child because the issue remains to be that of adherence. Adherence is a main problem here. So I heard in, in, in his explanation that sometimes Sometimes the father would take the child and the child will not be taking maybe medications. The mother, sometimes with the work she's doing, she gets overwhelmed and then maybe I don't know if it is the sibling, that one who drinks. So what I would suggest is that uh, uh, I understand uh, these people are on separation, but uh, this will affect uh, this child uh, negatively. So we'll need to to see these individual parents separately and then cancel them like intense counseling because the adherence is dependent on the, uh, on the mother and the father. So the, 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 the team there will need to meet the father since they have maybe already done that with the mother. If they can have that separ uh, the separate uh, counseling session with the father, so that is also involved and takes the lead in even reminding maybe the, the mother to take uh, uh, the medication uh, and also doing uh, 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 I don't know if my submission is clear, book. thank you. Am I audible, Doc? Yes, uh, a... we got your, yes, we got your uh, submission. We can we can have um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brian uh, give clarity to some of the queries that were were put in the chat box. Then afterwards, we'll continue with the comments coming in from the network. 
Mr. Taylor, you can go ahead. Mr. Patela, are you still with us? Okay, so we can have uh, Mr. Rabi go ahead and uh, make his comments. Uh, I just wanted to ask, did you, did they try IAC sessions with the man? Maybe I did not get that. Okay, yeah, so in terms of IAC, uh, we've been doing it on the mother, knowing that the child is five years old, so it's difficult to do it direct on the child. So we rely on the mother that we've been communicating to. Unfortunately, she's the only person that we have contact that we've talked to. We've never not talked to the father or in, uh, any other yet because she's not disclosed yet to the other yet. So what is the barrier that you have noted? So the barrier is uh, the schedule for the mother because she's, done, she's doing some form of business in the district. So what if she comes back late home in the, in the evening, she never used to give the evening birthday. So it's now for Moses Tilechan. Now the birthday, she's now giving the birthday to the the morning before she goes for business. But the other barrier that has come in is because the father to the child also comes in to steal the child at times, goes to the child for a week, brings back the child, which comes difficult because the child will go without any medications. Thank you. Is it possible to, what about treatment supporter? Have you tried uh, engaging someone who maybe is a family member? Maybe if you could talk to a family member who, can, who could be her treatment supporter where in times when you say she's not around, because you said uh, the one that is with the child when she goes for business is another young child who is not aware of the child's yeah. status. So is it possible to identify an older person, maybe her mother, her grandmother, the grandmother to the child, or maybe a sister or a brother who can understand the situation, then you engage them and make them a treatment supporter to the child. Yes, it's possible. Once we talk to her, I think if she's able to open up to one of the relatives, yeah, so she has to come with that suggestion, then we can do that. Once she's, or the person that she'll be comfortable with, yeah, it's fine, we can go that way. Thank you. Hello, uh, Mr. Brian, before we uh, move on, there's a question from uh, Dr. Zimba. He's asking yes. whether the, uh, well, he's asking about the father's, what is his HIV status? Then uh, once you clarify that, we'll, we'll give Maumbwe to uh, give the, uh, their comments and we'll hand over to the experts. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so when the community staff try to engage the father when they're doing the index uh, testing, so they discovered the father was a KP at another facility. Unfortunately, we didn't get the view for the father where he's getting from, but it's just within the district. Where the father is getting from, which is the KP. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So Mr. Maungwe, you can go, you can uh, go ahead. Okay, thank you, madam. Um, the four in VL is, um, though slowly, but it's uh, at least seen. I, my concern is on, um, on the nutritional part. If they can also engage the nutritionist from the, from the facility. Um, as the polite style of the lady that is in question, the mother, uh, being at the market, she might not be in position of uh, taking the, or giving the child a regular meal or something that is substantial. <laughs> Uh, I feel if he, a nutritionist could be also engaged as they go to give the to give the uh, the education, maybe that could help as well. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mr. Maumbu. Uh, we we'll now go. We we'll now give a chance to the experts to give their contributions before we can um, close the session. So I hand over to the experts on the call. Uh, we'll start with uh, Dr. Moriana because she has to drop off.
Thank you, Dr. Maybe. Chira. Yeah, it's interesting and difficult case. I agree with the previous speaker about engaging the father. Um, as long as it's the father and you've been getting the child, it's important that he understands what's going on so that even if he's going to get the child, he will still be able to continue giving uh, the treatment. So uh, in terms of the mother's home, I think it's important to try and find uh, another supporting caregiver who will be able to help with adherence in the mother's uh, absence. So I'm not sure exactly who else is in the home is able to find to help with that. Apart from the support from the ECAP, you'll still need somebody who lives permanently with the child to give that daily support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Muziana. I saw Dr. Muntali's hand. Dr. Muntali, you can go ahead. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the presentation, Dr. Piri and Mr. Chipatela. That was a very good case. I think from our view, it, it emphasizes that uh, caregiver support is very important for uh, viral suppression and for adherence. And also, that despite having a good drug, DTG is, a, is, one, is the best drug that we have right now. Despite having that, if we won't have good adherence, then we won't meet our goal for viral suppression in uh, children. Therefore, the presenters, this is a very good reminder for everyone. And uh, the contributions, you see there are a lot of issues concerning this from the, um, the caregiver point, point and also from the facility point. Therefore, this mm -hmm. is a very important take home message, I think. So thank you very much, that was my comment. Back to you, Dr. Chirwa. Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Chirwa, and good afternoon, everyone on the network. So my contribution is that um, the team that has presented uh, the case has highlighted a number of issues that children face because children rely on all the caregivers. Um, if there are any social issues, you see the child is living in with a mother who's currently divorced or who's on separation from the father, it has had an impact on the adherence and uh, viral load suppression. Uh, therefore, one of the things that we can do is uh, support this mother by ensuring that um, she's enrolled in a support group and learns from others, then we can also consider enrolling this child in DOT. So we can identify a treatment supporter who comes from uh, the zone where this um, child uh, lives in. Then ICAP 3 is already on the case. I would recommend a case conference for this child where we bring together the both parents um, and the uh, care providers so that we, we can come up with a lasting solution towards uh, issues with how the medication is handled when the child is either with the father and the mother. Otherwise, thank you so much, Dr. Mando, for highlighting the issues around retention in pediatrics and for Mr. Chipotle for this uh, wonderful case. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manzi. Um, do we have any other comment? Any other comment from the experts on the call? Hello, Doc. This is Chufasha. Um, I think uh, much has been mentioned, but uh, we will we'll still do good to get a genotype at this point. As we continue the regimen, um, this viral load has been high for quite a bit. It would be good to have a profile, even as we uh, talk about adherence. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. 
Um, do we have an, any other comment from the experts on the floor before we um, do a summary of, of, of the case? Hi, this is Meg. Um, I think most of the things that relate to this case were have already been discussed. I'm not going to belabor that, um, but I do want to just you know emphasize that cases like these, you know, if you think about them in aggregate, that these are these are the children who are contributing to, you know, our losses in the pediatric program, and so you know it really behoo behooves us to to ensure that these children and their caregivers are supported. Um, so that, you know, they remain in care and are able to um, achieve viral load suppression. So, you know, I think it's good to think about these children as individuals. Um, and I think that's, you know, really the, the heart of what we're trying to do is provide quality care. Um, but as a program, we need to make sure that we're addressing these underlying issues so that we, we achieve success as a program. Over. Thank you, Dr. Ming. Um... Uh, I think with that, um, I, I thank everyone for, for tuning in to this echo session, just a summary of what has been uh, said over the case. So very important is the provision of quality care to uh, pediatric population receiving um, ART in our facilities. And, and uh, it has also been uh, highlighted, highlighted uh, the importance of uh, good social support um, to achieve um, suppressed VO. Um, so for this client, the recommendation has been uh, that we uh, try to enroll uh, the child in a, in a support group, enroll the mother, the mother to the child in a support group, and if possible, do um, counseling um, of the mother as well as the, the dad over the child's uh, welfare. Then also, if possible, we can um, do dots for this child and um, just involve for the ICAP three. Just involve more of uh, the father in the sessions that that they have. Um, then uh, Dr. Chipasha also indicated that we need to do a genotype for 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 the child. So we uh, one last comment from uh, from. Uh, uh, Mr. Kelvin, you can go ahead. One last comment from Mr. Kelvin, you can go ahead. Am I well? Yes, sir. Uh, the other thing which I've seen we need to do is, uh, is just to have time with the mother and then try to talk about her viral load and compare it with that of a child. You agree with me, uh, colleagues and experts are uh, present here that uh, when it comes to a woman, there's also that factor of care about her child. And as much as she's, she's trying to look for food for this child, but we really need to bring much the picture, the health picture of a child and the importance of, of, of the life of this child. And if she can suppress, it means the child, the child also has got that high chance of suppressing. So in as much as we, can, we are bringing in the father, but we understand much time is spent with the mother. So the mother has to be counseled at that high level where you, you, she really needs some time to be counseled and be associated or be linked to a social support of some kind so that she doesn't feel burdened as in trying to feed the child and then also remember all those things of uh, giving the, the drugs to the baby. So a one-on-one -on -one counseling with a mother and just realizing the importance of what she's taking and the outcome that can also be taken to the baby. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kelvin. With that, we'll close the, the session. Thank you uh, very much to everyone that managed to um, join us for the call. Thank you very much, Dr. Piri. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chipatela. Thank you very much to the experts. Uh, your contribution has been very wonderful. Um, with that being said, uh, just a reminder that we need to fill in the reg registration form by following the link that has been shared in the chat. Um, have a blessed week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.